that's what the song was, and this is what I made it. Wins winner. Hopefully, this will get George to release Wins Winner this year. Ooh. Where is winds of winter, George? Where is winds of winter? Yeah. Where is winds of winter? It's about to start a bar. Yeah. Where is winds of winter? Where is it to George? Our Martin, it's coming. We have the first update this year, and in this video, I'm going to discuss what will happen with Jon Snow, what will happen with Daenerys, and that f fucking update to Winds of Winter. Please do me a massive favor and slap a like on this. Like goal is going to be 420. <laughs> Get it? But if we can't reach that like goal, the second like goal will be 69. <laughs> this guy's fucking hilarious. Oh, man. Thank you for watching. Long nights! Alright, so I'm going to do the wins update first. Uh, really, <clears throat> like, I feel kind of bad for click... No, I don't, because it's my fucking job. Hopefully you guys were at the very least entertained by clicking on this video. If not, well then slap a dumb uh, dislike and I'll see you in the next one, because y'all keep on coming back. But look, George it did, it did an update with the, with the writers for House of the Dragon, and in that is the update for Wins the Winner, the first official one of the year. So technically, this is not clickbait, right? All right, so all the way down here, George says the first season of House of the Dragon is now wrapped in thanks in large part, yada yada, to the talent of the, of the scribes, not the subscribers. And me, you ask, this is the update, no, I did not write a script for the first season of House. Well, technically you did, George, you gave them all of the source material. Uh, part of me would have loved to, but I would have been kind of busy with Winds of Winter. The other Thrones successor shows various wild card books, wild card TV show, and then, you know, the Marvel comic book. Yeah, yep, 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 no one gives a fuck about that. We care about Wins Winner, and he's working on it. It's coming. It's coming. The last A Song of Ice and Fire book came out at the start of the last Game of Thrones TV show. And yes, it was the first one, but, like, there's no other precedent. It's massive. If Dan and Dave were still working on Game of Thrones to this day and we were in season 9 or season 10, right? We had a full uh, adaptation of the source material. Winds of Winter probably would have came out in 2019. You know what? It probably would have came out when George was at that Worldcon that he said in New Zealand of that year. I think it was 2020. That's when Winds was supposed to be out, right? But it isn't. It's not here. All that aside, it's coming. I've been saying this for the longest. It's going to be released alongside House of the Dragon, right? At the very least, we're going to get a release date for Winds of Winter. So maybe we'll have the first season of House of the Dragon, a year with uh, a wait for the second season, and in that wait, we get Winds of Winter. Right? That's perfect. Technically, we'd be good for 10 years at this point. But let's talk about Jon Snow. <clears throat> To the average show watcher, and to those who are somewhat knowledgeable on the books, uh, will say John is a smart guy. He's much, much more smarter than he is in the books, and this is why he is my favorite character. In my opinion, Jon Snow in A Dance with Dragons has one of the most boring and um, very little things happen during his storyline at the wall. Like, yes, Melisandre's there, and she's telling him dark fucking wings, dark fucking words, watch out for daggers in the dark, they're gonna stab you in the face, Jon Snow, watch out, he's not listening, typical, typical Ned Stark kin, right, they're dumb as hell, they're dumb as a box of rocks, right, but, but, but in all seriousness, Jon Snow is dead, so it's really easy to predict what's gonna happen for him in the winds of winter, he's going to be brought back to life, on the TV show, Dan and Dave would have you believe that John was let outside by someone telling him that his Uncle Benjamin has returned. And while, yes, he has not technically come back yet in the books, John's not that stupid. So, yes, John is smarter than that version of the show, John, that went outside. Uncle Benjamin, are you out here? Is winter coming? Are you here? Right? That's not what happens. 
There's a massive, chaotic event going on. Melisandre is giving her nightly prayer ceremony not too far off in the courtyard. But there's a big, big, like, uh, uh, commotion because one Wegdar one one has just smacked Sir Patrick Flowers up against the mountain and his blood and guts are everywhere and in that there's a panic right everybody starts pulling out swords and shit and they're like hold the fuck up Mr. Giant Man you're not about to smash all of us we're gonna stab you 150,000 times to try to take you down right so all the while while that's happening Jon Snow rushes out of the shield hall he just basically uh, he literally said I'm going to become a Night's Watch deserter. I'm going to desert the Night's Watch. I'm technically the Lord Commander right now. I'm in charge of all of you guys. I'm bringing wildlings south of the wall. I'm doing things that no other Lord Commander has ever done. But also, on top of all that, I'll see you bitches later. I'm going south to go and um, fight this dude who called me a bitch. Basically, he called me a bitch, and I can't stand for that. And I'm not going to force you guys to come south with me, but whoever else wants to go with me, let's do this, right? So right after that, John hears commotion outside and runs to go see what it is. And as he does this, he's like, yo, 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 old tongue. T -t Talk to him in the old tongue. He, he knows what you're saying. And then John sees a sword out of the corner of his eye. And he's like, hold it. What are you doing? Don't, no steal, stupid, you're gonna, bam, nice gets slitched at his throat, he tries to grab at it, blood wells up in his finger, and then bam, stabbed in the back, and he's, he's like, oh, shit, what the, bam, stabbed in the belly, that time, the dagger stayed, and John fell to the ground, and he's like, G ghost, right, Jon Snow is going to be brought back. There's all those people around. Melisandre is right there. She saw what happened. Technically, the people that did it are within their rights, but they shouldn't have done it that way. Jon should have been, you know, beheaded, right? He, they should have had a trial, maybe all that shit. He's a deserter of the Night's Watch. Technically, they're within their rights, but also Jon hadn't deserted the Night's Watch yet. Melisandre's right there. She knew this was going to happen. There's a blood sacrifice for Jon Snow to bring himself back. Jon Snow will come back. He will... The boy is killed, and the man will be born in the winds of winter. Now, for Daenerys, everybody loves to say, Mad Queen Daenerys. That's why they did it on Game of Thrones Season 8. She's going to be a mad queen. Well, the Daenerys I'm reading in a Game of Thrones right now, in one of my many, many rereads, she's literally the opposite of that. She can't stand to see people... She can't, for instance, right, so she's riding with Jorah after this war, uh, Khal Drogo, when uh, they had their ceremony at uh, Vaz Dothrak, and uh, her brother has the golden crown put on him. One of the cows is there at the wedding table, but as soon as they leave Vaz Dothrak, this guy was attacking his city, um, the sheepmen specifically, and Khal's like, yo, fuck that. So the two of them war, and uh Cal Drogos, Calazar are basically uh, raping the, the, the lamb men, is what they're called. The, Daenerys at one point thought that they were Dothraki, but they're not. They're, they, they don't ride horses. They eat vegetables and they raise uh, sheep and shit. So, so they're not, they're, they're basically vegetarian uh, or vegan Dothraki. So, anyway, the Dothraki are raping them. Daenerys sees this and she's like, whoa, whoa, hey, bro, chill out. Chill out. There'll be none of that, right? One of the. One of the many things she does that breaks precedent um, and is actually more like the modern world. Daenerys is a modern woman, right? Th there's so many instances of that happening. Like, she feels bad for her brother even though he's a massive piece of shit. He's a beggar king. She's like, like when he barges into the tent and he's got a, a sword, even though he's not supposed to, they're in a sacred city, no one is supposed to have weapons in this city, his dumb ass comes into the tent, he whips his sword out, and he's like, hey, where's my, where's my shit, I want my shit, Daenerys immediately feels bad for him, because she's a good person, she's like, oh, damn it, you're just drunk, he's just drunk, not he's a piece of shit, Oh, man, there's, like I said, so many examples of her being a good person. So flash forward to her last POV in A Dance with Dragons, right? She was attacked at the pits of Daznak. Now, I've talked about this before. Check the links down below in the description and go watch a video about that. But basically, Daenerys is attacked, um, or is about to get attacked at the pits of Daznak. Drogon smells blood and flies in. And when he flies in, there's like 10,000 people there. They freak out. And then uh, his daughter, Zolorak, Daenerys' husband, uh, commands, because he owns, like, 90% of the fighting pits, he commands his people to kill the dragon. Daenerys 
sees what's about to happen, like Drogon could potentially either be gravely wounded or just flat out die, right? So she grabs a whip and she fights her way to him and, and he starts like breathing fire and she says, no motherfucker, step back, you bad boy, right? And she whips him into shape and then she flies off on him. She can't really control him that much, but she definitely has an orgasm when, when, when he flies off over the city. So then they go out to the great Dothraki Sea. She ends up back where she started, right? Uh, what happens with Daenerys in Game of Thrones Season 6 where she burns uh, that hut at, the, at, the, uh, at Vaz Dothrak? That very much something similar to that will happen. Most likely she's going to unite all the Kalasar. Like, like when she's at Vaz Dothrak in a Game of Thrones, she mentions how it just looks empty, right? And then she's informed by Jorah that Vaz Dothrak was built to house all of the Kalasars. So at any given time, if they showed up, there'd be enough spaces to hold 40,000 people, right? So Vaz Dothrak is this massive empty place and Daenerys on a dragon with, the, with part of the Kalasar that shows up at the end of a dance with dragons are going to spread the word. All the Kalasars are going to show up at Vaz Dothrak and Daenerys, much like she did in season six, is going to unite them, right? So Dan and Dave are massive idiots with certain things. Uh, but they're also kind of like they really did read the books and they were paying attention. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. One thing that really pissed me off is Cyril Pharrell is literally bald as shit. Dan and Dave goes, let's get a short pudgy guy with the curliest hair in the world. That's our Cyril Pharrell. I, whatever, I'm going to thank you all so, so much for watching Wins and Winners Coming. My name's Mark and this has been Sir Hunt's Reviews. Oh, damn, this boy was on 15 cups of coffee. That's because I finally fixed my Mustang.